Julie Stein. I was growing up and the leakies were finding things in East Africa and I was really little. I thought that was archaeology and when I got to high school I did a paper on archaeology and I got to college and there was a class on archaeology and I was I remember telling my mom this is so exciting. Um, the class wasn't as exciting as <laughs> I thought it would be but I did hear about an excavation that summer and my mom and dad said that I could go and I took a geology class before I went on that field school and loved geology. Loved it a lot more than I liked archaeology. But I went to this archaeological field school and just fell in love with how we do archaeology. And then I realized that none of those archaeologists knew anything about geology. This was Michigan, there were sand dunes, and that maybe I could combine the two. I could combine geology and archaeological questions. And from, I think, that day forward, I just kept doing geology and archaeology. And my professors were saying, you know, I think you're going to have to pick one or the other. And I said, well, I'm just going to keep doing this until eventually somebody will say you can't do that anymore. And um, I'm still doing it. So. So for undergrad, I was um, a local kid in Kalamazoo, Michigan, and went to Western Michigan University. Neither of my parents went to college, and both of my sisters, older sisters, had gone to Western, and my mother actually worked in the Honors College. And um, I often wonder why I wasn't more brave and just applied to the University of Michigan, but to me that seemed very far away and very foreign. And so I uh, ended up uh, in my hometown uh, at Western Michigan University. Western Michigan University has a very good geology department and had at that time a fairly weak anthropology department. And my professors knew people at the University of Minnesota. And I went to the Geological Society of America and met uh, famous geoarchaeologist Rip Rapp. And he recruited me to Minnesota for graduate school. And it was a fabulous experience. The geology professors as an undergrad taught me that you should go to conferences because they took vans to the Geological Society of America. And when I got to graduate school, I um, first my master's was on the uh, Bronze Age of the Aegean, the Greek. I didn't like working with uh, classical archaeologists. They don't work in groups uh, like I was used to. And so I uh, came back and did my PhD in the Green River of Kentucky on the Shell Middens with Patty Jo Watson. And I would never thought of going to an SAA, but uh, you don't work with Patty Jo Watson very long before she has you at all of the conferences, the regional conferences in SEAC. Uh, and it was fun to go because all of the Shell Mound archaeology archaeological project people were there so the little cohort you know runs around SAA and I think I've been pretty to SAA pretty much every year since that time. My research interest uh, is really was from the very early on geoarchaeology and I really wanted to combine that um, I realized in Greece for my master's degree that combining the geology and the archaeology wasn't quite enough. I really liked the camaraderie of a group and I wanted to look at a more complicated uh, question. Uh, complicated By complicated I mean one that people couldn't figure out the date from potsherd, people couldn't figure out the architecture from the walls that are still standing. 
Uh, and so the archaic of the Western Kentucky of the Midwest was just perfect. And it was very confusing and Patty Joe was trying to find the origins of agriculture in the Eastern woodlands. And I just um, liked the, that's where I first uh, encountered shell middens and the complexity of them, the fact that you uh, had to core them, that they usually were near water and then the water moved away or the shoreline moved. Uh, I just loved everything about shell middens, water and geoarchaeology. I think that when I got to the University of Washington, which was the first job I got after my degree from the University of Minnesota, I was um, looking for uh, a project that would be my own, independent from the Kentucky work. I tried a project in Belize uh, and really did not like uh, working in the foreign country. It was the situation was fairly unsafe at that point in time. And so I had one baby at that point and thought maybe it was a good idea to stay close. And so I started this project in the San Juan Islands, a group of islands off the coast of Washington. And they had shell middens there. There was nobody else working there. An interesting uh, geoarchaeological question about uh, stratigraphic um, repeating phenomenon of uh, dark midden on the bottom and light midden on the top. And I was trying to figure out why, uh, what created the light and the dark. But I think at that point, I really was interested in teaching more than ever before. And rather than doing the field work by myself or a group of people, I started a field school and I recruited nationally. I had 20 students every summer, worked with a very talented group of people who created uh, over an eight year period, a really good field school, a really great educational experience. And at that point, I also realized I really like to talk to the public. I really like teaching the public about archaeology. And I think this is what led me into the museum world. I became the curator of archaeology at the Burke Museum of Natural History and Culture. And um, after a, a stint in uh, higher ed administration, I went back and became the director, the executive director of the Burke Museum. And that's a completely different career. I go to different conferences from the SAA. I have met a host of new people. Uh, I'm still an archeologist. I still love geology, but uh, the world of museums has been my uh, world for the last decade or two. Um, milestones in my career, I think the, probably the biggest milestone um, if you define a milestone as a point where your life turns, um, would be the, the Shell Mound Project in Kentucky. Working with um, Patty Joe and Bill Marquardt and Janet Levy and George Crothers and those guys were just, we had an incredible amount of fun, uh, really hard to stay alive in 100 degree humidity humidity with corn that was 14 feet high. Um, and that, I think, really sort of changed my life. Just knowing those people, uh, Pat became my mentor, those people are my peers, they're fun, I drank a lot of beer with them, <laughs> and um, that would be a, a big one. Certainly uh, getting the job at the University of Washington, which was a very prestigious department at the time, a uh, very strong theoretical perspective of Bob Dunnell, very strong uh, character, uh, taught me a lot. He was a very smart man, difficult to get along with sometimes, but um, certainly uh, sent me on another trajectory. And then I guess the last milestone is just um, 
the Burke Museum and finding the passion that we have for museums, many of us. And we're building a new museum and it's going to open this fall and we're all really proud of that. Taking an old dilapidated uh, warehousey kind of museum and turning it into something the community can love. Well, um, I was pretty shocked when people in my department were, weren't happy for me when I got pregnant. <laughs> I, don't, I always thought I would have a family, so um, I was not quite prepared for the prejudice that accompanied women in the 80s when we got pregnant. So that was, um, that was a setback and trying to overcome that. Uh, pretty much, I think they all wrote me off. They thought I was gonna just walk away and leave them, I mean, leave the profession, because none of the archeologists at the department at that time had children. So they had assumed that if you had children, you couldn't be an archeologist. I don't know if that's true, but um, that was very difficult. So if setback means a period of, of difficulty, um, I got really used to not talking about my children. And I see other people that got to talk about their kids. Um, well, I'd have to say that um, Patty Jo Watson, I was very, um, lucky. Uh, my advisor at the University of Minnesota was Denny Puliston, and I don't know if you've heard the tragedy, but he was a Mesoamerican archaeologist and struck by lightning on top of Chichen Itza, the pyramid. So I um, was in a Center for Ancient Studies at the University of Minnesota, which was an interdisciplinary PhD program. I could put together the geology and the archaeology. And I proposed to them that Patty Jo would be my advisor, even though she was at Washington University. So um, she was um, incredible, and a lot of the students at WashU uh, became friends of mine. I never took a class from her, which is interesting. But And then a, a second one is Meg Conkey. I was, uh, never did any field work with her. But um, knew her, of course, from SAA, and her daughter, uh, who went to Holyoke, as she did, um, wanted for her junior year, she wanted to come to the University of Washington for her junior year abroad, because her daughter had spent years in France, so she didn't want to go to France. She wanted to go to a big four-year college. So I became... Alessandra's mother away from home and then Meg and I were just really close because um, she was there and her daughter stayed in Seattle so very fortunate to have somebody like Meg who um, is so active and so wise and um, has had lots of shifts in her career uh, and built such a great department part of such a great department at Berkeley. So that was really influential. I was the only woman in the department at the University of Washington. So most of the women students, uh, although I wasn't their advisors, um, they uh, came to me for issues of life and uh, divorce and babies and how do you do this and um, it was a it's a, they're very very smart and it was a great honor to uh, mentor them uh, some of them I was their advisor I was the advisor of two people th three or four people who were not at the University of Washington the uh, Sarah Sherwood and Debbie Green and uh, Deborah Kligman and others that uh, didn't want to come to the University of Washington, but uh, they, would, they would come and take my GOR classes, and then, then I would be on their committee. And uh, that was really fun and interesting and a great opportunity.
My biggest contribution to archaeology is probably what I have done in geoarchaeology and the papers that I've uh, written about uh, thinking about deposits and the units that we collect artifacts out of. I think our archaeologists were too focused on the artifact and not the package that the artifact came in. I would say that the deciphering a shell midden that book was also uh, a bigger contribution than I thought it would be. Um, that was the result of that incredible field school that um, a very large people, large number of people put together. But that book um, still uh, is used by lots of people, and it's sold on eBay for very large sums of money. I don't think anybody's ever bought it, but it, it, they're often selling it for hundreds and hundreds of dollars. So if you have a copy, keep it. <laughs>